welcome to online classes so we have discussed of the class first year chapters of productive logic in the previous previous lecture we have discussed basics of productive logic so projectile park projectile In the previous lecture, we have analyzed the projectile motion in two parts. This is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. If a particle is projected like that, and we have seen that this particle path is like that, and this is the velocity, and this angle to be theta, we have to represent. And here we have to take the two component of the velocity, v cos theta, and v sin theta. The two components that we have selected, and on the y-axis, acceleration is acting vertically downward, and here the acceleration is equal to gear zero on the axis. We have two things, and we have to project it. The light of here, we simply see in the next previous slide, and we see that the particle is going first here, after that here, here. This is the projection of the light. After we have to project the light in this direction, and we see that the particle is moving here, 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 and here. We have to see and analyze. It. Now we are simply using straight line conditions, using straight line motion, straight line motion. Along y axis. So now y axis should be here. So here should be y axis. Acceleration is minus the minor direction and velocity is in upper direction. Then velocity should be v sin. So we are using the simple calculation. We are moving. Upward direction is to be positive direction, and v is equal to v sine theta, and acceleration is equal to minus, and displacement equal to zero because the particle is moving first here, and after that the particle moves to the back, and net displacement of the particle will be zero. So, using the equation. As y is equal to u t plus half a t square. This is the equation statements we are using here. What is the displacement from the y? So we know initial velocity is v sine theta minus a beta rho g into t square. We are simply using the equation from the y. Now, v sine theta into t is equal to half g t square. Here we have been taking the two terms. T is equal to either zero or t is equal to two v sine theta. Um, These are the two important conditions. So t equal to zero. This cannot be accepted here because t equal to zero here this is the when t equal to zero the displacement of the particle will be zero because the particle is started from here. This is the initial time. And when the particle is moving upward, after that this is going downward, then displacement is also equal to zero. This is the second time. That is achieved by the particles, and this is the time we have to remember. And this time is called capital T, and this is called to two mu sine theta upon t, and this is called time of flight. This is called time. So we have to remember first formula time. Of How we have to derive this formula? Simple, we are using 
equation of motion along the y axis and write the values, write the components of the velocity on the y axis, acceleration on the y axis, displacement on the y axis. We are using these concepts, so we are getting the two times in the world. First time is to be t equal to 0 and the second time is equal to 2 v sin theta per v. There are the two times that is achieved by the particle in both of the cases. The displacement will be 0. The first case is the first time at t equal to 0 and in the second case that is the time when the particle goes upward and then goes downward and the total time that is to be acquired by the particle that is known as time of flight. It means simply we can say that what is the time of flight? Time of flight is the time in which the particle stays in the air. That time is to be consumed. The time of flight is the time in which in that particular time the particles already stay in the air. Because when the particle is striking from here, this is already go in the air. And here again it hits the ground. And how much time that is to be consumed by the particle? That is time is to be known as time. <coughs> this is the basic concept we have to learn the time of flight. In the next we have to continue that the maximum height that is to be attained by the particle. What is the maximum height that is attained by the particle and what is the range that is covered by the particle. What is the range? The maximum horizontal distance. This is for the range. And this is for the HMX. So we have to determine both of the two factors.